are prepared to make a deal. Captain, a special... Do not make a hasty choice. Haha! <laughs> you are indeed a wise young human. The rosy sphere is yours. Very well. Since this is your first time trading with us, Captain, allow me to explain our standard operating procedures. We will sell you fuel, ancient artifacts, even our own Mauler starships. All that we ask in return is that you assign some of your crew to serving here at our trade world on a permanent basis. No, 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 Captain. Slaves have no choice in their destiny, no freedom. We would never accept the permanent assignment of one of your people unless we knew that they had granted you the rights to make such a deal. People as skilled as your flagship's crew will receive immediate posts in our Starfleet. They will serve alongside our own true Starship personnel, sharing every duty. This is a great loss for us both. But, we will not make an exception in case. However, please try to be receptive to what I am about to say. We have taken the liberty of entering your ship's computer system to investigate the agreement signed by the Earth who serve aboard your vessel. As we expected, we found that they have promised to obey you, Captain. Under every circumstance, no exceptions. You are fully within your rights to deal with us in our required manner. Should you change your mind, we will always be ready to work with you, Captain. Return soon! Patronages appreciate Fancy meeting you here, Captain. We, the appointed representatives of the Grimson Corporation merely come to obtain the fair and reasonable payment for our goods. We traveled to this region of space years ago to sell the useless Ultron device to the Ugly. We knew even then of the weapon on the surface below us. This was to be our price, but the Ugly used a clever ploy to cheat us. I had convinced the morose Ugly fools that the Ultron was the answer to all of their pitiful dreams. Powers, the Proctor's boy, will it give us the powers we crave? I assured them that, yes, the Ultron would give them the second sight. The Ultron would allow them to see into the past and the future. The Ultron would slowly imbue each of them with unique secret powers of great significance. The Ultron would ensure that their race's huge potential for greatness would be fulfilled. Then, then a mistake was made. Enough foolishness. We will take the precursor device from the surface and then leave. Thereafter, I may see fit to bequeath the entire planet to you, Captain, for your invaluable services. Provided. Liar! It is we who are the genuine owners. 
Not you, Captain. Those many years ago, when we offered the Ultron to the Ultimate, how they capered and laughed at their good fortune. Fools. Then they begged to hold the device, just for a moment. To close the deal, I permitted this. A grievous mistake. The moment the high prompter touched the Ultron, her body arched and her eyes rolled back in her head. She began to babble in meaningless phrases, and howl like a beast. We had expected the Ultimate to fall for ourselves, to buy the useless device, but never with such gusto. Their self-doubt and lack of clear reason left them vulnerable to our every motion. Then, the Proctor's body relaxed, and her eyes slowly closed. When they reopened, her visual orbs showed with a wild and frightening this is all we could have dreamed of, and more! She had told And now, as to your price! I opened my mouth to speak, but before I could utter a word, the proctor interrupted. Wait! No John feeds your thoughts directly to me! Do not speak! I know what you desire! What could I say? That the Ultron was a farce, and could do no such thing? I was stunned. Proctor continued. You drew to the Crimson Corporation, desire an object of great antiquity, something of secret function and value. Very well, it shall be done. And with that, we were led to a small vault. The Proctor ceremoniously opened the door of the vault and explained that because we had been of such great service, all of the treasures within were now ours. Inside we found a hodgepodge of ancient and useless artifacts, a glowing rod, an absurd trident, and more such junk. I could see no way to salvage the disastrous situation at that time. But when I heard of you, your travels and your foolish questions, I realized that you of our justice. And lo, it is so. You have heard our justification. It is valid and unassailable. Now go and do not return. No, you will not. We know your soul, young captain. It is no brighter than ours. We acknowledge our greed. We revel in it! You are the dishonest one, hiding your shame in shadows. You fabricate justifications, rationales. In the end, we are just the same. But now you stand in our way. You will not be moved. Therefore, we will add your true name to our ledger of hatred. But first, Die, child! Die! Uh, I suppose as a courtesy I should extend an appropriate greeting. On behalf of the Ootwig Proctors, I truly hope for your sake that your day has been better than ours, although this really isn't saying that much. What good would that do? I mean, why should we? We agonized for hours, wondering if it was a cruel twist of fate or simply a serious case of butterfingery. Ah. Uh... The lifetimes that have been spent in the pursuit of the elusive answer to this deceptively simple question has driven many of us down the dark road of self-destruction. Indeed, even as these words strike the ears of any who care to listen, the real question is, does it matter? I cannot say, I wallow in a quandary, unable to determine 
What better atones for my part of the great sin? Should I engage in slow and painful self-termination? Should I commit myself to a long life of painful self-flagellation? Should I throw myself with enthusiastic verb at the problem of collective annihilation? I do not know. Even now, my mind writhes in anguish of indecision, lest the outcome be inadequate. But you know, it really doesn't matter. After all, we have a famous perfect saying. When one loses the reason for existence, one tends to get less motivated. This goes hand in hand with the painfully appropriate credo, We broke it, so we are paying for it. Of course, this isn't really accurate. The situation is so much more hideous. Imagine if you can, holding within your hands the answer, only to have it taunt you with its former potential. Ah, oh, cruel irony. The loss of the Ultron frees us all. Should I set my gaze upon such a sight, I might suffer sleepless nights for years on end. It is a symbol of the collective Ludwig failure. It is our ultimate tragedy. Ah! Every divot, every crack on its surface is etched forever in my soul. Remove it from my sight lest I purge my... Hey! That is not the devastated Ultron, it is the image of the Ultron before. A trick? A trick? Oh, I had no idea that any species could sink so low. How dare you try to manipulate me with that cheap stage prop. Why, it's not even... Hey, wait a second, it looks like... Can it be? Yes! It is! A miracle! Oh, happy day! Joyous occasion! You have our eternal thanks, good captain. You will be immortalized as the blessed figure that delivered unto us our future. We will revere your very likeness. Let me take the Ultron. Yes! I feel the link! The knowledge and the power! Mm, it seems that there is much to do. Indeed, it seems that you should proceed to the second moon of the sixth planet of Zeta Hyades and take what you find there. We no longer have need for it, but the Ultron reveals that you will. I thank you for your part in the grand scheme. We now recover that which is ours via destiny and proceed to perform our essential service for the universe. But wait! The Ultron throbs and whistles. Matters of significance are being relayed to our brains. It has been so long since we communicated with the ultimate in such a manner. But slowly, the truth is revealed. Our destiny! We have been directed to join with our Supox allies and attack you! No, wait, that's wrong. Sorry! We attack your enemies, the Earth One and the Core Ah. No, that's not right either. What? Oh, okay. We must strike only the black ships, only the core off. Now, Captain, we must leave to prepare our battle fleets. Wish us luck. We extend our sincere greetings to the remarkable being that returned to the Utwig the meaning for our continued existence. 
have returned from a conflict of a grand scale, with our fleet battered, but our masks of valor and daring do held high. We have met the core awe in battle, and, well, let me explain. Initially, when our forces swept to the Horologi stars, they proved effective against the armament of the Core A. With our shield absorption technology, we were able to sweep clear the Core A's spinning blades and absorb the brunt of their fiery corona, allowing our Supox allies to concentrate on the vessels themselves. However, the costs were high, very high. I should don the facial effigy of remorse for lost comrades. We have done all that we can. There are no others capable of significant intervention. Certain doom grows imminent for all of us. We lament. But wait, listen closely. The Ultron intervenes. There is a solution. You are the solution. Only you may halt the core us seemingly inevitable advance upon life. They can be defeated, and you must do it. Oh, my spirit is lifted. If only my mask of confident and lofty posture had not been burned. I would don it with rash impudence, ignoring all etiquette and procedures. Excellent! The Ultron's coruscations indicate that your future actions are laced with great potential. Proceed with our heartiest endorsement. Your need must be great for you to have risked so much just to bring us from beneath the shield. We were not ready, but this is now in the past. What is done is done. You are intent on stopping the Urquan. Very well. We are prepared to assist you in whatever way we can. We must first tell you that even before we were placed under the Slave Shield, we realized that the only way to truly defeat the Urquan was to first destroy their precursor battle platform, the Samatra. This vessel was responsible for the victory of the hierarchy over the Alliance. When it was brought to bear against our worlds, we could not resist it. This must be your priority. This must be your eventual goal. We know what is necessary to achieve this end. But first, we must know what you have already learned. So we will scan the data banks and logs aboard your ship. There. The process is complete. Now we can discuss what you must do. You need to locate the Urquan's Sabatra vessel. If you cannot find it yourself, ask those others who are near the Urquan. Perhaps they will know. The Sabatra is sure to be heavily guarded. To allow you to get close enough to the Sabatra, 
you will have to create some type of diversion. To defeat the Urquanum, you must first destroy the Sumatra battle platform. The only way we can envision this occurring is for you to detonate a huge explosive device adjacent to the battle platform at point-blank range. We believe that the only weapon which can generate sufficient destructive force is a matter-antimatter bomb, but we cannot build one ourselves. Return when you have gathered the resources we have described. We will provide you with the designs for a new class of fighting ship, the Avatar, along with enough chimera to command however many vessels you may build. Avatar battleships are much more effective than our Green Home or x vessels. In competent hands, these ships can defeat any ship in space. We cannot help you until you have gathered the necessary resources. There are rumors of such a device, a precursor planetary tool, to be found somewhere far towards the core, in the possession of another hostile alien race. We cannot provide any more information at this time. In our studies, we have learned that the Urquan are especially sensitive to psychic manipulation. Your best strategy would be to find a weapon of this type. Be aware that most psychic weapons are not mechanical constructs. They are usually intelligent life forms, often inimical. We await your return. You are ready. You are fully prepared for the undertaking. There is every chance that you will be able to destroy the Sumatra and stop both the Urquan and the Quora. We will now fit the precursor weapon and our own crystal amplification system to your vessel by routing a portion of your flagship's fusion power through the weapon's ignition chamber. Its destructive force will be multiplied by a large factor. Your vessel will be totally annihilated. No. The completion date for your vessel's modification is roughly two weeks hence so that you and your human companions may make any necessary preparations at your starbase. We will now transport you and your crew back to Earth immediately. Good luck, Captain. We greet you, human Captain. What do you need from us? Yes. We have reached two conclusions. One, the location of the Sumatra can be confined to the stars in the Crateris constellation. Seek the vehicle in this region. Two, because the Urquan lost so many ships when the Shofixti caused their own sun to flare, the Kor'ar's forces are grossly superior to the Urquan. If the war is not over between the Urquan and the Kor A, it shall be soon with the Kor A victorious. When this happens, the Kor A will move through space, destroying all intelligent races one by one.
until none remain. You must not be distracted. The Samatra is the key to their dominance. Destroy their sacred trophy, and united with our allies, we can defeat their star fleet. Seek the location of the Samatra. Fly there with greatest speed. Use the powers of the Dinyari, and while the Urquan are in chaos, destroy the Samatra. You are prepared. With courage and fortune at your side, you will be victorious. is complete, we will crack the Urquan Slave Shield and emerge from our chrysalis like a winged insect unleashed from its cocoon. Then we will be ready and capable to deal with the Urquan, their battle thralls, and their dreaded Samatra. The complete synthetic hybridization of the Chen Jesu and the Murkham species will require approximately 35 of your Earth years. This extended duration is necessary because our synthesis mechanisms are dependent exclusively on the light of our sun for energy. What you describe is theoretically possible, but it would pose a great danger to us. The process must be executed as planned or it may fail catastrophically. We would be destroyed. Though your ship's design is unfamiliar to us, we now understand that you are of human origin, and so we will share with you our reasons for accepting the status of Urquan Slave. In 2135, our great alliance burned within the crucible of sentience. Though our fleets of armed starships held back the hierarchy's grotesque armada for many years, in the end, the Urquan unleashed a power upon us that was so overwhelming, we knew we would be annihilated if we did not submit. This unstoppable power, this ultimate weapon, was a huge starship, an unstoppable battle platform built by the precursors in the ancient past. Your vessel shares some similarities in design to the Urquan's battle platform, which they call Samatra, meaning Great Trophy. The Samatra was many times larger than your ship, and bore weapons and defensive systems that made it invulnerable to all of our technologies. It remains a mystery to us why the Urquan fought us for so long without using the Samatra. But when they finally brought the ship into combat, the Samatra incinerated our finest brood home vessels from ten times our own ship's weapon range. We had no choices beyond 
submission, or devastation before the Urquan arrived to accept our surrender, we sent one last message to your people. A message suggesting that your species do as we Chen Jesu and Murder plan to do. We would accept the Urquan's demands and become slaves until such a time as we found a way to destroy or neutralize the Sumatra. Our wisdom is available. Detail your need. You must find some way to destroy the Sumatra. To do this, you will need a powerful weapon capable of destroying an entire planet. But that is not all. You will also require some way to distract the Urquan to give you the opportunity to use the weapon. Though your presence here is a painful intrusion, we will always provide advice whenever you request it, Captain. Goodbye once and future ally, human. When the process is complete and we emerge from our chrysalis, I shall tell your grandchildren of our conversation this day. Fellow carbon creature, may your roots always be well watered. I am Captain Alas Lana. We come in peace. Our starship is called the Tender Shoot. We are the Supox Vitricularia from Earth. Oh, yes. We apologize for the confusion. Our home world is also called Earth. Or more properly, Lek. Which means perfectly good and nutritious dirt. Earth is pretty close, is it not? We learn and we adapt. We are symbionts. Our first step in making friends is always to copy them. This our idiom. Our kind evolved on its beautiful planet, orbiting the wonderfully green-hued star roots. From the canopy of the great jungle to the shores of the azure sea, our species has flowered and grown well. Early in our evolution, we adapted to exist in symbiosis with other hardier life both flora and fauna, who supplied us with nutrients, while we supplied them with reproductive assistance. We share this region of space with the Utwig, the wearers of masks. We have a strong cultural bond with the Utwig. They have been the foundation around which we have grown our star-faring culture. We are not only allies, but we are also friends. You should go meet with them. They could use some excitement. You see, they are a little depressed and morose right now. Usually they are most festive and fun. They broke their Ultron. The Druge, the cruel, foul trading race who sold the device to the Utwig, called the device the Ultra, and claimed that it would give the Utwig superpowers. Unfortunately, the Utwig believed the Druge and bought the Ultra. However, the device did make the Utwig very happy. Of course, we didn't tell them what we really thought of the Ultra that they were vapid fools to buy a piece of junk for a planet's ransom. We went along with the falsehood, and in doing so showed our own stupidity. Then, one sad day a few years ago, the Ludwig Proctor dropped 
the Ultron during a particularly energetic and festive ritual. Now the Uthig are morose and depressed. They feel they cannot ever achieve greatness because they lost the powers of the Ultron. They even gave the broken device to us, saying that they couldn't stand the sight of it anymore. We are worried that the Uthig are so depressed that they may use their ultimate weapon. Here, you take the Ultron. Maybe you can do something with it. We thought that if we could get the Ultron working again, it would cheer them up. So, we tried to figure out how to fix the darn thing. Or at least get some of the flashing bits working again. But for all the druges falsehoods, the Ultron is some kind of artifact and we could not synthesize the necessary replacement parts. Perhaps in your journeys, you will find the elements necessary to repair the Ultron. Then you could give it to the Utwig, and maybe they wouldn't be so depressed. Ah, our human friend. We are so tired. The battle is so difficult. We met the Kora with the size of our Utwig allies. The destructive power of the Black Ship was greater than anticipated. However, we did eventually develop tactics in conjunction with the Utwig that were effective against them. We destroyed dozens of their battleships. Alas, we lost many of our brothers to the spinning blades and the fiery ring. We are but humble plants, mere saplings in knowledge of such things. If you seek wisdom, visit the Utwig Proctors. Fare thee well! I've seen on the view screen. It's none other than the flattened old face of our friends, the human. But all oh, you're not knowing that we, the Yeha, are allied with the Ur Quan now. And your presence outside the slave shield and in an armed starship are clear violations of your oath of fealty. Whatever shall we do? It just isn't the right thing to kill you, human, but as a loyal member of my clan, I must obey the wishes of our queen. Your words are flying in the face of the facts, human. We are no longer being your allies. But unlike the nobles of our homer, we of the Starship clan are bereaved at this course of events. The Queen's decision to be joining the hierarchy pains us. We cannot! To be doing so would be a direct violation of our Royal Queen's commands! Live? This is unbelievable! This is a sad, sad day to be hearing this thing from you, human! The 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 I can't even say their vile name! The 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 skunk of the greatest embarrassment our species has ever suffered! Do not be calling these wretched creatures an offshoot of our species! Better than to be calling them garbage or droppings! Better yet, do not be talking about them at all! If this is being a true thing, there will be many changes, but we are a species long ways in the ways of deceit. You must be proving these words you say, Captain. Send the show fixed to as a way of proof. We are scanning the separation of a vessel from your fleet, Captain, and indeed its configuration matches that of a show fixed scout vessel. This had better not be a trick, Captain. We are knowing the power of a glory device, and if you detonate the weapon near us, the price for you shall be dear. Very dear. The scout has docked, and we await the pilot's appearance at the airlock. The atmosphere cycle is complete. The door slides open, and... It's true! The show fixed the other light! Look at that fat, muzzle, those shining black eyes! The sweet, 
it was. I chilled the leopard from oblivion. That no will is with the cruelest truth. We who have sacrificed our honor, we who have lain with the enemy, we are not worthy. We are nothing. We are less than nothing. But wait, we are the Sparty. We are the Yehats of the Starship Clans. We will not let us lie any longer. Listen, and I speak these words. If our queen makes the dishonorable command, then it is the queen who has no honor. And the dishonorable queen is no queen at all. We, the Zeep Zeep, are the only clan who remembers the true meaning of honor. We shall tear the queen from her throne. The two thousand year reign of the Zeep Zeep queens is over. The revolution has begun! Human. You shall never be fully comprehending the damage you're doing now to our Yehat culture. For fully 2,000 years there's been peace between the clans, and now you have cast the ancient seed of dissension between our beaks. The bloody wars of ascension are renewed, and you are the cause, Captain. While the deep, deep traitors may be your allies, Captain, I can be assuring you that we of the deep, deep starship clan are wanting nothing more dearly than your death. Revolution? You compliment yourself unnecessarily, Captain. This is nothing more than a band of thugs trying to undo the peace of a hundred generations. We will roast the traitors in their ships and crack the eggs in their clan homes so that never again will the deep, deep criminals be flying through our stars. The pain and suffering of this useless conflict are being nothing but a tragic waste of life. Congratulate yourself, Captain. The source of all this death and misery is yourself. Now you must pay for your crimes, human.